Hey everyone, this is the LEGO Jurassic Park T-Rex Rampage set from 2019. This was a special request from Patreon supporter Dottie Pink. So all thanks go out to Dottie Pink for the fact that I bought this set, built it, and I'm now reviewing it for all of you. This set is made with over 3,100 pieces, and I'd say roughly half of your build time goes into putting together the gate, and half goes into making the dinosaur. Looking at the gate first, this measures about 16 inches in height, or 41 centimeters, so compared to the size of a completely random minifigure, it's big. This has some randomized foliage around the base, and you can see that most of the structure is built with studs on the side construction. So the outer cladding is mixed between tiled surfaces and studded surfaces, and I think that makes for a nice balance and a nice texture and it doesn't waste too many pieces to get a consistent look. This does use stickers to get the major decorations, so that's actually three stickers there. I strongly recommend that the PA and RK stickers down below get placed as close together as humanly possible, otherwise you end up with a completely unnatural gap between the A and the R. It's already a little bit too much as it is. Most of the building around the front and sides is symmetrical from left to right, except for the foliage. It is very different in the back, however. I really like the texture that's used for the ground down here, even though that does mostly just use repeating rows of the same piece over and over again. In that color, I think it works out well. And they did a good job with the studs on the side construction for the rail going down the center. Unfortunately, the set does not come with a truck, a Ford Explorer, to actually run on that rail. The doors open with a linked gear mechanism that is pretty smooth and makes for a nice appearance, although they don't always close together properly. Around the back you can see how that works. Each door just has a lobed gear and those ultimately are both attached to the same place, so you just rotate this. This does feel a little bit flimsy back here, a little bit too flexible, and this section here that holds the sign is, uh, well, it comes off much too easily, so definitely be careful if you reach for this to demonstrate it from the front. Don't put too much pressure on this or things will start to fall apart. To make the whole set more interesting, each of these little cubby holes here has a representation of an iconic scene from the original movie. This one is the muddy hillside with the fake Barbasol can with a stolen sample in it. This one's the table the kids were eating at just before the big Velociraptor kitchen scene. It's too bad this only has one seat. I really like the jello though. This area I'm simply going to call Jeff Goldblum's room for obvious reasons. If life uh, finds a way. The electrical power control area is, I think, better than it has any right to be because they've got the different colored lights for the, the statuses as you go down from the top. It doesn't actually have the buttons there, but I think this is good enough. And then it has the correct buttons on the right as well as the major switch that you pump. And when I was first building this, I didn't even realize what this here was supposed to be. It's kind of macabre. It's the arm. The computer workstation makes good use of the available space. I mean, this is really wedged in there, but it does work. And you've got some exclusive stickers used for the decorations for the screens of those monitors. There's also a single keyboard in the center there, and the chair is able to rotate around. And lastly, there's the toilet, because the toilet scene was a pretty funny one. Although, I have to say, this setting here kind of makes it feel like more of a true indoor space, like it's inside of a building, and less like a little outhouse shed that's, you know, easy to expose. I guess I should have pointed out when I was mentioning the whole door opening mechanism that this is sort of another small scene here. You got just the little nest with a single egg that is opened up, and there's another platform over here. You can put the baby dinosaur up here, and we'll see that with the minifigs. The T-Rex measures about 27 inches from nose to tail, or around uh, over 68 centimeters. So when you compare it to the size of a completely random minifigure, it too is big. I am completely happy with this. The, the build process felt good, felt like there was continuous, consistent progress being made. You know, it had that, that good psychological feedback of, like, I'm, I'm doing a leg now, I'm doing a body, I'm doing a head, and things get added on in ways that, that make sense. It just felt good, it felt very satisfying. It also feels very satisfying when it's done to, uh, to wag the, the tail back and forth, because you got this really organic motion you can very easily get out of it. I just recommend that you put a little bit of forward pressure against it as you do that, and it just, it just works. Now the tail 
segments just turn from side to side with the exception of the last two little here, two little ones here that are able to go up and down a bit. That doesn't really do that much. These are fairly solid, fairly strong. I mean, if you're, if you're really rough with it, you can pull these off. They're just attached with a bunch of Mixel style ball joints inside of there, but it does work out pretty well. I would say I do have this in the somewhat close to correct kind of positions rather than having it you know standing up tall like Hollywood has, has taught us in the past uh, but you can get this to go into the more Hollywood style of of pose by rotating at the very interesting uh, hip joints they're, they're very interesting on the inside you can't really see the mechanism from the outside but they really tried to put a lot of friction in there to make sure that this thing is able to stand up you can see it kind of wiggles around a little bit but it's not too much I mean that might look like you know, it might look a little bit janky there, but it's actually not. It actually has good stability. Uh, you just kind of get get over that little bit of wiggliness. The feet are great. I really like, I mean, they, they feel very, very bird-like, very raptor-like. I, I like this scale texture right here. I like the combination of studded and tiled surfaces. They didn't, uh, the designer didn't try to go too far to make it 100% smooth. So it still looks like something that's that is made by Lego and made with Lego. Uh, I like the color scheme here. A lot of people, when this first came out, complained about the, the shape of the head and the face. And uh, I saw at least one major revamp to the, the style. But uh, I actually am completely happy with this. It might not be entirely movie accurate. I will, I will definitely say that, but I like it regardless. Um, if you're looking for absolute movie accuracy, then I can definitely see, you know, having, having problems with this, but, uh, it just looks really cool. It's very three dimensional. Uh, you can see both the eyes <laughs> from the front, which might not have been entirely accurate. I don't think they were able to look forward like that, but this does have the exclusive eye piece. So that's a, a nice special little thing there. You're able to open the jaw. You can move the the tongue around a little bit you can also kind of turn that from side to side but you know this is fairly well covered up on the inside so you don't see a lot of gapping in there even this little bit of uh, i don't know the the medical term for that but that little bit of of webbing on the inside inside of the jaw is nice although there is a gap behind it uh, unfortunately though you are able to rotate the head side to side a bit it's kind of limited and you're not able to angle the neck up and down because it will always just fall there's very little uh, friction in there. Of course, if you did angle it up, it would just leave a bigger gap down here. And then the tiny, tiny, tiny little arms are very well articulated uh, for, for what they are. So that works out well. You can also splay the toes in and out a bit if you want. Change the angles of the, well, yeah, change the angles of, of the claws at the end there. So the, the nails. And they also have the, the weird, uh, uh, what do you call that? I mean, it's like a thumb, right? It's, it's effectively evolutionarily related to our thumbs but it's just always in a in a weird place and that's done pretty well overall i am super super satisfied with this thing uh just have very very few complaints like i kind of wish that it had a little bit more articulation but you're at least able to get it into the most important poses i think um yeah i think this is just really good one nitpicky negative I will call out that is not really related to this set, but is more about Lego's quality control. Uh, a lot of these brown pieces are showing very, very obvious weld lines or flow lines where the plastic goes into the molds. So you can see a little bit of a, a little bit of a design in there that's fairly consistent across the, the one by twos, especially the curved pieces. Maybe some of them won't show up so well for you, depending upon what device you're using and how your your device uh, you know display settings are set up with your contrast and everything but in some lighting conditions for me it's actually pretty obvious and a lot more obvious than it should be and uh, especially given the fact that we pay premium prices for this plastic from Lego in particular and we expect them to hold to their their creed their their motto of only the best uh, I would like to see something better than this because this doesn't look like the best to me Set comes with six mini figures and a nice stand. I really like the presentation here, how it makes it look like it's really part of the, the Jurassic Park world or Jurassic World world now. 
know, just the, the little details and a little bit of foliage, I think, is is nice. Kind of makes it stand out from like Star Wars uh, figure stands and stuff. And then you also get the baby dinosaur. So I mentioned that before. This can represent a baby T-Rex, which would make a lot of sense, or it can be used to represent a baby uh, Velociraptor, a small Velociraptor from the movie franchise. And there's also, of course, the UCS style plaque back here. This is one big sticker. Just wanted to make sure you can see all the, the details on that. So as always, big sticker, be very careful with it, but uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Up close left to right, here's Ian Malcolm, Ray Arnold, and John Hammond. Unfortunately, the print for Ian for the torso, though it's very good quality in its design and ultimately like the, the edge quality and everything, it's very sharp. Uh, the color is just all wrong. It doesn't match his skin tone at all. So that's pretty messed up. It's nice that they do have the torn up leg there. That's done pretty well. This is all done pretty well with the dual molded legs here and the prints line up pretty well from the torso into the hip, into the legs themselves, which also have some print on them. Got the dual molded arms over here. Yeah, I think everything here looks really, really nice, except for the skin tone printed on the torso. And I know they can do better than that. Prints around the back all look appropriate for the garb. And the first two have alternate faces. Of course, Hammond could not have an alternate face because of the headgear that he wears. It would show that secondary face. Here are Alan, Ellie, and the devious Dennis Nedry. All good looking figures, I think that of the three, uh, Ellie is the best of them. You know, just it's done the best. It, it has the most features to it with really, really good print alignment on the legs, especially dual molded legs used for that figure. And the print alignment from front to side on each side is really good. Also notice the skin tone there is done well. Like the opacity there is good. It's not super faded or anything. We can see nice little metallic details in here. There's shading in there. Like that's just really well done. Uh, Nedry's jacket is done pretty well. Uh, it, you may think that his eyes are a little bit pale, but that's intentional. You know, they're showing that there is some some color or some refraction with, with the glasses. So they went with the gray color for the irises, pupils. What What is that combination of both? Also a metallic color for the rims there. Got the single little, little claw piece represented here for Dr. Grant. And once again, around the backs, these have very good and very appropriate uh, prints for the torsos. All of these look really, really good. This one to me especially is, is special, you know, special having the, the, uh, the logo on it. She gets an alternate face. He gets an alternate face but none for Dr. Grant because of, once again, same hat. Here are the leftover parts, and there are two important things to note here. First of all, critically, there is one extra, one spare of the exclusive T-Rex eye included in this set. So cherish that uh, almost free gift there of something that's very, very valuable. Secondly, there are two spoons here to go with the, the eating scene. There should be only one spare. The other one is not a spare, but I didn't put it into the scene because it's supposed to go into the, the bowl that appears to have three scoops of mango ice cream in it, and it just doesn't stay there. So you kind of have to just sit it in the room or keep it, keep it separately. I just kept it, kept it completely separate because it would have just fallen all over the place as I moved the set around. And then here's the spent sticker sheet. So that was the one for the plaque. This and these two were for the sign, and then these three were for the computer screens. In terms of value, you can look at the price to part ratio and it looks pretty generous, right? It's difficult to complain about that. And truth be told, when I look at the volume of stuff here, having actually built it in front of me, I feel like this is a set that Lego would easily charge $250 US for, uh, if not even more. When I was just looking at, looking at the pictures, um, I didn't really feel the value, but I do feel the value now based on how Lego price, uh, prices things. And again, the price to part ratio itself is, you know, it's a number, it's, it's data and it's difficult to, uh, to argue with that, especially when there are quite a number of good sized pieces in this. This is not one of those sets that is completely full of little one by one plates and tiles. So price to part ratio, I think looks fair and believable. Uh, 
I do have some some criticism about this set though. I like the the T-Rex as I kind of expected. Uh, actually, I like it more than I, than I expected. So that's that's all good. The gate has always been the the part that I had issues with and was the main reason that I didn't purchase this in the in the first place. Uh, and having actually built it, you know what? I actually like the look of it better than I expected. I like the size, the proportions, the colors in general, all that stuff feels pretty good to me. But the construction of it in terms of like when you touch it and you know the whole thing of this whole sign area coming off easily, what I didn't talk about because it would just be an extra little detail, I wanted to kind of get you through the, the major things quickly, is these panels here on, on the sides, like these are super flimsy. They're, they're just hinged from up above. They ultimately hang nicely, so on display this is good, but it just, it doesn't feel good to me. Like these things just pop up all over the place and they don't really give you any access to the to the scenes inside or anything. So there, there's no positive to them. They just feel not good and you have to align them just right. And they kind of want to splay open at the bottom. Also the way that the, the, the gate, the, the doors can open towards the front a little bit and then it, doesn't want to close back. I think that, that doesn't feel good to me. And then the biggest, come on, one at a time, go to the back. There we go. So I got that centered. Okay. So a lot of things just don't feel right, even though everything looks okay to me from the front, but around the back. So a lot of, a lot of the parts, right, go into building these little scenes, these little vignettes back here, uh, which you know, we're, we're heavily marketed and like that's that's one of the one of the important things about this set. And one of the major things that you're buying here is the, the nostalgia and the references to iconic movie scenes and everything. Um, they, they don't strike me very strongly. Uh, my favorite is is definitely the, the little the little eating scene, the little too much dessert scene, and mostly because of the jello. It's it's two pieces, but it's absolutely perfect. And it's very memorable. But like the, the toilet doesn't feel right in this space and it's it's small the computer room is okay the power uh, control little area is done pretty well but just overall each of these is is really artificially set into here it doesn't feel natural to me and it feels like it added a bunch of pieces that didn't need to be included with with this set and i feel like the set could have been cheaper if they had done this a little bit more simply or better yet if instead of having those little scenes in there, this came with a Ford Explorer, or if you don't want to call it a Ford Explorer because of the whole rollover Firestone under inflation fiasco thing, uh, I think that may be the reason that Lego has never done that vehicle, you know, call it something else. Like just don't, don't use the, the official name for it. To have an actual vehicle to be able to put on that track there would have been golden. I think that most people who were interested in this set were interested in the big T-Rex. And if you're in that group, uh, you're in luck because this is a really good big T-Rex, at least in my opinion. Uh, you may have issues with, you know, some specifics of, of the shaping of the head. I know a bunch of people did, but I'm very satisfied with the whole thing. And the build process really adds to that as well. When you put this together, it feels right. It has that interesting mechanism that you you have to see in the build. If you're never gonna get this, just look up the instructions for it. See how the pivots for the uh, for the legs are, are done. They're actually pretty cool. The figure selection is really nice, really nice. Does not come with the kids. Could have come with the kids, maybe if they had skipped a few pieces back here or something, skipped maybe the, the smallest little little scenes, that would have been nice. And I think it would have been proper for something so expensive, such a big, major, major set uh, as it is. You can get the kids or could get the kids by buying the smaller Jurassic Park set uh, to, you know, to complete things, but it would have been better to get a more complete selection of those. Overall though, I am pretty darn satisfied with this more satisfied with the look and uh, visual impact and impact in the room of the archway, even though I'm still kind of disappointed in the stuff around the back and a little bit about the construction, but the value is there. So yeah, this was definitely a good experience for me. I hope that you've enjoyed this little bit of review, even though it's not the newest set that just hit the market. 
Again, huge thanks to Dottie Pink over on Patreon for the support and for picking this without that selection. I, I would never have gotten this myself. I would never have been able to experience this because I, I had passed on it uh, already when it when it was released. So that was that was a gift to me, and I hope that I've been able to share some some Lego goodness with you as well. So thank you for watching, and uh, I'm gonna keep working and talk to you again soon.